All right, well, can everybody hear me just fine? I tend to sometimes be a quiet speaker, and uh, I also am a moving speaker, so I hope you don't mind if I come down here with you and speak, but uh, I am Kendall Stewart. Um, this is my first time at A4M, and uh, I have to say I'm very delighted to see the type of uh, specialists that attend this meeting. It's absolutely um, something I will return to many times because this, you guys are the type of uh, caretakers that are very much after my own heart. Um, I am a skull-based surgeon, so I used to open heads every day. And the way I was taught, which was to destroy systems, was not a very good way. In fact, it's much better to heal and recover neurological systems. But the problem is, is that nobody really talked about those problems. And so the last 15 years of my life has been spent trying to figure out how to recover neurological systems. And you know what? There's no man's medicine that's made to do that. Okay? But there is ways for us to replace things and understand the deficiencies in people who get neurological syndromes and to replace those. So I appreciate you guys coming back from lunch early and I'll try to make this really exciting for you or at least the best I can. Now neuroimmune syndromes are basically syndromes that involve the nervous system and immune system and you will be very surprised that when people present to your facility the people who have immunological problems will a lot of times have neurological problems, the people that have neurological problems will also have immunological problems. They almost go hand in hand. They are really a very large group of disorders and they're always defined by their symptoms because doctors did not know why they occurred. You agree? Okay. Affects up to 30% of the population and what I like to tell people is that I don't treat patients, I treat families. Because these are genetically based and about 30% of the population will have some form of this disorder. Okay. Now, it's also very confounding to physicians and patients. They travel from doctor to doctor to doctor. In fact, the average patient who saw me uh, a couple of years ago when we evaluated had seen over nine physicians as an average. Okay? That's a problem. Now, neuroimmune disorders, migraines, headache, vertigo, dizziness, chronic fatigue, fibromyalgia, chronic pain, neuralgias, neuropathy, adult ADD, anxiety disorders, depression, autoimmune disorders, Alzheimer's dementia. Now, who in the world likes to see these patients walk in the door? Anybody? I do. Yeah. Good. I'm glad. <laughs> well, the answer is most doctors hate it. Because what you're going to wind up doing is treating the symptom and not treating the person. Okay? Now, I'm also very lucky to also take care of children. And that was the blessing in disguise because children who have uh, disorders such as autism are really, really um, pure as far as their genetic um, uh, consistency, I guess is a good way. So many of the things that I'm going to tell you today about adult neurological problems, we actually identified first in dealing with the autistic population. But in children, we will see also autism, ADD, ADHD, learning disorders, Asperger's, social anxiety syndromes, asthma and severe allergies, seizures, migraines, hearing loss, oculomotor, and post-concussion syndrome. Now, who likes to see these? There you go, same guy. Two doctors, okay? Three, there we go. Oh, okay, more and more, all right. Well, listen, the reason they're so confusing is because we don't have functional testing in most physicians' offices. In fact, I had to develop functional testing to identify these people, okay? And that was pretty easy for me because when you're gonna go open somebody's head neurologically, you better know what the heck you're gonna be doing, okay? So it was a natural thing for me to develop a group of tests to put together and look at what was going on. And I'll teach you a little bit about that today. But basically, the reason I came here to, pretend, to basically present this problem is because you are the kind of physicians and care providers that will really are already equipped to help these people. Because what we have to have when we deal with these patients is an incredible complexity of knowledge. You have to have biochemical, neurophysiological, immunological, hormonal, genetic, nutritional, anti-infectives, nutri nutraceutical supplementation, toxins and xenobiotics and therapeutic understanding, which guess how many doctors really care about learning all that? Not very many. I assume that the people in this room do. Now, when we looked at these people clinically, what we were able to find was something that was pr pretty consistent. We found dopamine deficiency syndromes. These included moon instability, poor focus and concentration, sleep disorders, hormonal regulation issues, fatigue, bowel motility issues, kind of your classic patient who a lot of us see. We had high levels of antigenic sensitivity and chemical sensitivity. We had fluctuant symptoms, 
good times and bad times. And that's very important because if you have a base nervous system problem in the brain, it does not fluctuate hardly at all.